Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Triggered Precision Machine. This is episode eight of the Precision Rifle Reloading Series, and this is gonna be part one. I wanted to break up episode eight into two parts just because there's a lot of stuff to cover, both here in front of the computer at the bench, and then there's also gonna be a lot of stuff to cover out at the range, and I'm trying not to make this a, a hugely long video. So, a couple little updates on where we're at as far as the testing on the six Creedmoor goes. So we made it through all of our optimal charge weight load development testing. We found our load, our powder charge, and then we went on to test our seating depths and I settled at a 30 thousandths jump. So I had really good groups from 30 thousandths on out to 60 thousandths of a jump. And I think we'll go with the 30. That gives me a little bit of room to expand as the throat erodes. And we should never have to make any sort of changes on our, up our cartridge loading length for the life of that uh, barrel. So. What we're focusing on now is doing all the harmonic tuning on the barrel. So at the end of this rifle, I have a Harrell's two port tuner brake. And the way this brake is set up, it's a little bit different than the EC tuner that I'm familiar with. So this tuner has a lot less mass on it than the EC tuner does, but it also has more travel. So the way I understand it, and I've done a lot of research on this is with the lighter mass, it's gonna take a little bit more movement, but you have a finer resolution for tuning. So the heavier mass, when you screw it in and out on the barrel and change the effective harmonics of the barrel, then it's a little bit more of a gross measurement, if you will. So either both of them get the, the job done. You guys have seen my Voodoo 22 with the EC tuner on it. I've had great luck with that, super easy to tune, and I'm sure that this one is gonna be the same way. So I wanted to get it right the first time because I've never, I will admit, I've never done any sort of harmonic barrel tuning with a tuner on a center fire rifle before. So this is gonna be my first experience doing that. And I did a lot of research and talked to a lot of people to figure out the method to do this because it takes a lot of rounds or it took me a lot of rounds to get my Voodoo 22 dialed in with the EC tuner and center fires with the the, the cost of components these days and the availability of components these days, I wanted to make sure that I did it in the least amount of rounds possible and the most effective way possible so I get the right data from the start. So like I mentioned before, I did a lot of research on how to get this tuner dialed in in the least amount of rounds possible so we can preserve our uh, supplies, our primary powder and bullets, but I came across a lot of different methods and essentially they all do the same thing. They start out with coarse graduations on the tuner brake and they move in to finally the fine graduations where you dial it in and you have the best accuracy that you can from your rifle. One article that I found very helpful was here on the computer in front of me. It's called the Hopewell Method of Barrel Tuning and I found it on the New Brunswick Bench Restrator blog. Now I don't know if these guys are the ones to come up with this method but there is an article written by a person named Guy Sterick, and I can post a link to this below, but it does a really good job of walking through the process from start to finish. And he divides it up into four different parts. So he has preliminary tuning, he has intermediate tuning, intermediate tuning part two, and then finally the fine tuning. And that's just the progress that we go from course, and we go finer in each time until we finally have the exact place where the collar needs to be on our tuner for the best accuracy. So what I came up with was kind of a combination of what I read in this blog article, some of the other internet forums of, and comments from guys who've had hands-on, a lot of hands-on experience with these devices and my own experience with the EC tuner on the Voodoo V22. And then also uh, my buddy Dave at the Kremlin Gun Club, he is the one who provided this tuner brake and two others for me to test out on this channel. So thank you very much, Dave. He's also a person who has a lot of good hands-on experience and a lot of success with this particular unit. So he gave me a lot of good information. So what I, I did was I kind of took all of it in and figured out my own method and how I'm going to do it. So. Now we'll kind of get a close up and I'll show you guys what the tuner brake looks like, how it's set up, what the graduations look like as far as the tuning collar goes, and I'll kind of run you guys through how I am going to go through the tuning process. All right guys, so here's a nice little close up of the tuner brake itself. So as you can see, divided up into three different parts and we have our, what I'm gonna call the brake body here. And we have this lock ring and then we have our actual collar. So the collar has 
graduations on it every 36 degrees. So it goes from zero to one to up to nine. So, and then back to zero. And the graduations on the actual brake body itself go from zero to 150 in looks like uh, increments of 10. So there's uh, zero to 50 with five hash marks and then 50 to 100 with five more and then 100 to 150 with five more. So each one of the revolutions of our collar here is gonna give us 10 on our body. So theoretically we should have 15 uh, full revolutions until we reach the 150 all the way here at the very end. And then our lock nut is gonna follow and that's what's gonna lock it into place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out at zero, zero. So zero, zero is right, right there. We'll start out with the collar locked and we'll shoot our first three shot group there. After that, we'll progress one full revolution and we'll shoot another three shot group there. And we'll do that until we reach the end of our graduations on the brake body itself. So we'll be at the 150 and we should have 45 rounds total downrange. So 15 three shot groups. And then from there, we should see our pattern like we discussed and we'll go and let's just say theoretically or hypothetically rather, we saw the best group at, oh, let's see, what is this? The 50, hash mark on the brake body itself. So we'd start out at zero because that's where we shot that last test and shoot another three shot group there. And then I'm gonna break it down one tick mark of the tuning collar, so 36 degrees of revolution and we'll go both ways. So below and above that 50 zero mark on the body and the brake. So we'll go to, so we'll go down, so we'll go nine, shoot a three shot group there, go down to eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, all the way to zero. So it would be 10, or I'm sorry, one full revolution below. Then we go back up to 50 and zero, and we do one full revolution in 36 degree increments all the way up until we shot another full revolution. So that'll give us 10 groups below, 10 groups above for a total of 20 groups of three shots. So that's gonna be another 60 rounds down range. And hopefully what I'm thinking is that should be enough to do it. So what we can do is if you guys can see here, the collar here is broken up and there's not any finer graduations between let's say the zero and the one. So that's what we have. We have zero to one, but what I wanna do is kind of break this up. And if we land on a, a really good load, let's say it comes out to be, you know, here at the eight, that's what we're seeing as far as uh, the best group we see on the target is here at this uh, eight hash mark in the 50 hash mark on the brake body. So from there, I'd like to kind of break that down into, I don't know, maybe quarters or something, lock that in, shoot a three shot group, and we'll go to a half and we'll kind of just estimate where these roughly are and three quarters and then one and go do that again in both directions above and below and kind of find out if that has any effect at all. So hopefully that made sense you guys. I know um, some of that might have been confusing, but I think it'll all make sense when we actually see the results on target. Because what I'm gonna do is, uh, for those first 15 three-shot groups, as we move through each revolution of the tuner collar, I'm gonna mark all those on the target. So it should be pretty obvious as we progress through this thing, and it's going to be done in two different, or I'm sorry, two very distinct stages. So. We're gonna have that target or those targets with the one full revolution groups from zero to 150 on the brake body. And then we're gonna transition over to using the increments on the collar, that uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for a full revolution. And I, I, once again, I think we'll see really good results. I don't think this rifle is gonna shoot bad really no matter what. I, in my experience, these six millimeters, especially the six Creed Moors, the six GTs, they just seem to shoot and they shoot really well. So this is gonna be a win-win situation, but I really hope that we see that nice pattern because that'll kind of uh, really give good context to what we've been talking about a lot on this channel and that's the harmonic frequency of the barrel. So hopefully we'll get this out there soon, you guys, so you can see the results, but until then, have a great rest of your weekend and we will see you soon.